Okay, so hello everyone. Now that you have actually collected the volatiles from the Arabidopsis roots with your SPME fibers, we're going to analyze those samples here in my lab at Virginia Tech. And we're going to use this instrument here for doing the volatile analysis. So what I would like to do is walk you through this instrument and show you the main components and parts of the gas chromatograph and mass spectrometer. And some of the parts I can't really open, so there will be some additional slides that will give you some more information about the function of these components. All right, so a gas chromatograph attached to a mass spectrometer basically has the following components. Up here, we have a so-called autosampler. Down here, this box is the gas chromatograph with an injection port. Down here, we have the helium tanks, which provide the helium gas that flows through the column of the gas chromatograph. Then this part is connected to the detector. In this case, it's a mass spectrometer, so a very special detector. And this detector is hooked up to a computer, which we will see in a second. All right, so now let's um, look at some of these components in more detail. As I already mentioned, this is an autosampler. And what this robot does, it automatically injects samples, which can be liquid, or they can be SPME samples, like the ones that you have collected. And it will inject these samples into the gas chromatograph. Well, your samples were provided or collected with field samplers. And I will take those field samplers and actually manually inject the fiber into the gas chromatograph. So we're not going to use this entire part here, and I'm not going to explain more about the operation of this autosampler. But it's a very typical part or component of gas chromatography, all right? Okay, so the samples will be injected here into this injection port, which sits on top of the gas chromatograph. And I can't really show you the inside of the, gas, uh, of the injector, but there is a glass part in it, which I will show you right now. Okay, so what you see here is a glass piece, a glass rod, or we call this a glass liner, and this is part of the injection port. The fiber from the SPME uh, field sampler will be inserted into this glass liner and it sits underneath the injection port. This is the top of the injection port. The fiber will be inserted through this top part and then goes down into the glass liner. So the glass liner inside the injector is very hot and that's very important in order to desorb your samples from the fiber. We have a temperature in here of about 220, 240 degrees Celsius. So you can imagine that all the compounds that you were trapping on the fiber are desorbed. We call this thermal desorption. The compounds are released at this high temperature. The fiber is then pretty much clean after that and you can reuse it. And the compounds are all going through this glass rod and they're carried by the helium gas, which is an inert gas. It's not reacting with any molecule. They're carried with the helium gas through the glass rod and then they enter the actual gas uh, chromatograph and the column. So gas chromatography pretty much follows the principles of chromatography. And as you probably already know, chromatography is the separation of molecules through a column that contains a particular matrix. So when a sample runs through a column, then the compounds are separated on the matrix according to either molecular weight or um, polarity or charge. In gas chromatography, volatile molecules are pretty much separated by the molecular weight or they're separated by polarity. And I want to show you now how the column looks like that we are actually using here. 
So this strange thing here is the actual gas chromatography column. And it doesn't really look like a column in the, in the first place, but it's a very thin, very flexible, and very long column. It's actually 30 meters long, and the diameter of this column is 0.25 millimeters, so very thin. So why it is so long? Well, it has been optimized for this length so that we actually get optimal separation and resolution from a very complex mixture of compounds that run through this entire column. Since it's 30 meters long, it's actually um, curled onto this um, metal support. So, well, you don't see any column here because it actually sits in the oven of the gas chromatograph. And I'm currently not able to open this door, but if I opened it, you would actually see the column sitting inside of this oven. All right, so why are we actually using an oven to separate compounds that go through this column? Well, the reason is we're applying temperature for the separation of the compounds. And we can heat up the gas chromatography oven from room temperature or 40 degrees Celsius all the way up to 240 and even 300 degrees Celsius. So this oven can be really hot. And that temperature gradient that we can apply is very important for, again, an optimal uh, separation of the compounds on this column. So you can imagine if you're running all of the sample or all of the, 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 the molecules through the column at 40 degrees, it would take us a long, long time to get all of these molecules off this very long column. If we run them at 300 degrees, they would all come off immediately, so we don't want to have that either. If we run a gradient, we can optimize our separation process, and we can actually speed up the chromatography process. So usually a run takes about 30 minutes, and that's pretty good to separate most of the compounds that we are interested in. Right, that's pretty much what you need to know about the gas chromatography oven and the column. Once the molecules are leaving this large uh, column, they will go to a detector because they need to be detected somehow, right? So now let's move on to the detector part of it.